Welcome. This is Tax Pro Nation, the home of the independent tax professionals, where you can find a tax community, maximize your earnings, and live life on your own terms. I'm your host, Imelda Ledesma, COO of Pronto Tax School. Thank you for joining us today. We will be listening to Andy and Andrea discuss with other tax pros about creating a step-by-step process for mostly S corporations or for any entities with balance sheets, the challenges they have encountered and how to better the process. Um, I had asked Andrea and um, she, she bravely, you know, she's very brave individual. So she bravely said yes um, to, I wanted to address something that we're working on in my own, uh, in our own tax business, um, which is to basically um, create a process, like a step-by-step process for um, mostly S corporation tax prep, um, but really any business entity where it involves uh, a balance sheet, an entity return, and kind of the, um, I guess like like companies with revenue five hundred thousand and up. You no, know, those kinds of companies where it's a pretty significant, um, you know, their tax return can be a significant amount of work. So. What we're having a challenge with in my company is, so like myself and Cynthia, my other partner, um, are on the point of um, like that that small business owner point that like whatever happens, you can always figure out a way to <laughs> to get the job done, right? Um, but what's happening as is as we're having other team members who are taking in those kinds of business clients, um, we are not doing as good of a job as we want to do by of giving that person a process to work through um and so that they can effectively and efficiently do that that work and serve that client um as well as be supported you know by our senior team and and where we can kind of log into the process see where they're at you know and not have them try to figure everything out on the fly um so what i had asked andrea to do is um, I wanted to kind of go over what the process document that I'm building and then intake, um, you know, kind of from Andrea, as well as from anybody else that has comments is um, at the end of this, we I, I want to come away with like an actual process document that shows step by step what should ha- what should be happening. Um, and I want to but I want to get perspective from Andrea and from other tax pros. So um, with that being said, I wanted to launch a little poll at the beginning here. Um, Imelda, if you can launch that, I want to say before I launch this poll that for myself, the answer to these questions is all no. So don't feel like the, you know, we, we try to do a no, it's a no judgment zone as far as like, you know, uh, feeling like, oh, I have to say this, or I should have this done. We want to just have like candid, you know, conversation around it. So the first question is I have a step-by-step process that I use for preparing S corporation tax returns. Um, would this be true or would this be false? Uh, like I said, for myself, it's actually false. So I'm gonna, just going to let you know so you don't feel any any judgment. Um, and then secondly, the process that I use for preparing S corporation tax returns is written down, recorded on video, or otherwise transferable to another person who could follow my process in a step-by-step manner. Uh, as I just said, for me, that that's a, I'm going to go with false on that as well. Um, and then for this for this part of it the fees um what is the average fee that you're charging for an s corporation tax prep as well as for that client's 1040 and just ballpark is fine just to kind of see where we are here and I, i'm hoping with this question it'll give an idea of the opportunity side of it like if you had another teammate who could do this kind of work how, how would that impact um what that teammate could earn the revenue that you would have into your business from that teammate and just kind of that, the value piece of it. So um, whenever you guys are ready, just quick submit those um, those answers and let's kind of see what we are. Let me show you guys, um, let me show you where I'm at right now on my document. Overall, Andrea, does that, does what I said just make sense or resonate? I know you have a bunch of team members that you're managing as well. Is this Does this resonate with you? It does indeed. We don't have fully fleshed out processes. We do use Jetpack workflow for our task management. And like, for example, our 1120S prep job that we set up for clients is very detailed. I was just looking at it and it's got 
40 steps. Okay. Interesting. So that part of it is documented, but I don't know. I just feel like it's, it's not like the whole process isn't documented. That's literally just preparing that return, but there's things that happen before it. And there are things that happen after prep. And that's the piece that I think we're a little bit lacking And your, your document addresses a lot of that stuff. So this will be fun. Yeah. Interesting. So, so Jetpack workflow is the, um, is what so i'd imagine i'm your teammate and i'm assigned a client a tech an s corp to tax prepare to prepare the tax return right i'm going to go into jetpack workflow and am i going to kind of check off the steps that i do yep. um okay how and, and do people actually use that and follow that oh yeah we require it all of our okay. teammate every every job that we do for every client has a task well in jetpack they're called jobs everything we do for every client has a job in jetpack and that's followed every month or whatever period the work is done, semi-monthly, bi-weekly, weekly. So we do find that helpful and it makes it so if we have to move work among the staff, it makes it easier to transition a client because that client's job has been customized to what we actually do for that client in most cases. Some cases they haven't been fully customized for that client yet, but the basic steps are there at least. And that has been a years long process getting that built out like this this you know rome wasn't built in a day right this was this has been a process yeah because we prefer in my company to build processes that people don't actually follow (laughs) that's the key thing we have those too (laughs) (laughs) you got to build out a a 40 thing checklist and then make sure that people don't actually use it that's it's usually the the preferred way but um okay interesting so um so as we go through this, you guys, I'm going to kind of show you like what we're doing as I'm trying to t- train our teammates with a process that they actually will follow and that they buy into and want to use, right? That actually makes their life better as opposed to um, feeling like you have to force someone to do something that they don't want to do, but to actually enable them, empower them, uh, you know, by the process. So I'm going to take some notes of Andrea's thoughts as we go through it. Um, Imelda, maybe for people that are in the chat, you know, it's hard for me to like maintain the things like multiple things at one time. So if you could, for so, if somebody has a, um, something that I should plug into this as a note, because at the end of this, what I'd like to do, you guys, is deliver a document to all of the members with input from various pros and even in, within the group, you know, so that everybody, if you want to take and build out your process, however you want it, you're not starting from zero. Um, and, uh, so, so maybe Imelda, could you launch the poll results real quick, just before we get to, before I totally forget about that. Okay. So it looks like we have a lot of people in, in the same category as me, where, um, we might be more on a figure it out basis, um, rather than using a a standard process. So only 17%, um, uh, even though I know you guys do a lot of different, these types of returns, but only 17% step-by-step process. And in terms of documenting the process, only 5%, again, no judgment. It's just reality. Um, and then opportunity wise, you know, in terms of the revenue, um, looks like majority of people are $1,500 ish between So that's, um, if we imagine a teammate that could do 40 of these returns a year, 50 or a hundred a year, if you multiply that by the average fee and and what we're finding among our members is there's usually one person in the business that do, that knows how to do this kind of work. And it's usually the person that's on this meeting right now. So if you can add other people within the business that can do this kind of work and you can multiply that by the fee amount, Hopefully that kind of start. And that's what I'm looking at on our business is like, this is a major revenue opportunity, but it's only an opportunity for us. If I feel like the work is actually made done to a really good degree, you know? And so that's what kind of building this process, the, the goal of it is. So thanks to everybody that participated in the, in the poll. Um, Andrea, could you, and, and even this too, like the, the rapport piece of it, like we find that, and I know for my myself being a business owner is that most business owners are not excited to, to deal with tax stuff, right? So can you talk a little bit about, and not only yourself with the, like you can build rapport with a client by your personality, by being a business owner yourself, but other teammates, like the client usually like we find when we dive right into like the technical aspect of re- requesting all these documents, we don't do any rapport or warm up. 
it kind of like depletes a little bit of the experience. Can, can you, do you feel that way or how do you handle that? I do. And you know, back before I made a bunch of the changes that have been made the last few years, we were a higher volume practice. So we had a lot of those once per year tax clients, like a lot of you have. And I did find it challenging to build a relationship with a client that you're only talking to once a year for maybe an hour, right? A lot of these returns aren't that complicated for us. And so we can get through them pretty quickly. And so part of pivoting my business model is that we have multiple touch points with clients throughout the year ahead of tax season. So okay. by the time we get to the compliance work where we have to give them a to-do list that they don't really want to deal with, we've already communicated with them a couple of times. They've already gotten to talk to us and ask us questions. We've already been collecting some of that information, which lessens the amount of things we have to collect from them during tax season. And so it's a little bit different business model. I would say the answer will vary based on whether you're more of a compliance practice versus a like planning practice. Both are great. Both can be really successful tax practices, right? You can make a ton of money doing compliance work. I love a, what I call a simple tax return. Like give me a stack of W-2s, maybe a couple of 1099s. I will bang those returns out all day long. But I got to the point where I realized I couldn't have that client relationship like I wanted because I had to have 600 of those. So I love that kind of return, but I didn't love that kind of client relationship. I couldn't figure out a way to bridge that gap with the client relationship piece and stay a high volume compliance practice. If there's anyone here who has figured that out, I would be, I would be all ears. I would love to hear it. Yeah, I think I think for us um, and, and definitely anybody that also if you want to unmute yourself and like comment on any of this stuff, it's more than welcome. Um, we're so we're the total opposite of what Andrea just said, you know, like we're not doing the bookkeeping on an ongoing basis um, for most clients, even an S Corp client that, you know, like we may have a couple touch points during the year. They have a question or we offer some advice or something. But, um, you know, we find that to. Most of the client, these business clients are really focused on their business. And so just asking them, how's business? How's your family? You know, how, how's, how's life in general? What were the big things for this year for your business? And just getting on the level of being actually interested in their business. Um, do, you know, and it doesn't have to take a lot of time, but just to start with that rather than getting straight into the technical let me hassle you for all these documents. I think this is actually a really important step if you're not in contact with the clients more so. Um, and, and I think for the, for the, like the reason I wanted to have this in the document is that like an employee, they don't think the same way as the owner because this will come na more naturally to the owner because you know how important it is to the client experience and, and you want to uh, retain the client, maximize the value. Whereas employees, we find that we have to put this actually in our process and tell people, don't skip over this. This is super important. Like try to understand what are the changes with the person's business? Like, do they have a new competitor? Do they have, you know, are their sales way up? Are their sales way down? and just doing that first. So um, we find for us, this is a super important, um, you know, super important part of the process. And we actually have a client care director and one of her tasks is to send periodic check-ins with clients. And it's not a check-in that requires them to send us anything. It's not a to-do list. It's just a, hey, hope everything is going well. Hope your business is successful or whatever, whatever the wording is. We change it a little bit each time, but it's really just a, hey, just checking in on you. Don't forget we're here if you need us. Simple, short, doesn't take a lot of time. The client doesn't know that that same email went out to 50 other people. And it just, it kind of keeps us top of mind, right? Like, especially if you're doing mostly tax return work, um, you do kind of still want to stay top of mind. You want them to know that they can reach out to you during the off season. If they have questions, you want to keep being their go-to person. And so that quick little email, one sentence can help to keep you at the top of their inbox kind of right. Like just little, don't forget I'm here if you need me. Yeah. I think when you start to work with a client and you realize that, wow, this person really does not want to see me or interact with me. Their idea of a good time would be if they were not doing what, what we're about to do. And so to somehow, you know, try to get beyond that at the beginning of the process, uh, we, we think is super important. So um, I appreciate the perspective, Andrea, on your kind of different business model. Um, now, I think most people, and I've heard this a bunch of times from members of the group, is that if the clients would only give me what I need, 
um, <laughs> you know, things would work a lot better, be more efficient, uh, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so when it goes to requesting what we need, how do you, how do you handle that? Um, Andrea, and then also I'm going to share a couple of resources that we have for you guys, um, you know, in this area, how, how do you handle the document request? I think this is probably like the number one stress point in every tax practice, right? Like no matter how much you train your clients and how good of a relationship you have with them, you're always waiting on them for something. So we use tax dome. Um, and those of you who've been following along with me for more than a year may recall that I didn't use tax dome, but then I acquired a firm that used it. So now I use tax dome and I will say the organizers that we send out that I just sent out now that it's the beginning of tax season, really do help walk the client through what information we need. And it includes in various places where they can click to upload that document. So it keeps it very organized and orderly. We have a practice policy where that requires that we don't start the tax return until the organizer is complete. So we won't even start the return work until the client has actually completed the organizer, which will at least require them to take the time to go through and click some boxes. Even if they speed their way through it and don't give us all of the info, they've at least taken some of the time and that kicks off the process. It doesn't solve all of it, right? There are still clients that we have to chase and we have to remind them to do their organizer and we have to remind them to actually attach the documents. So I haven't found a way to get 100% compliance on this, but I do find that having that organizer as part of our required process does eliminate some of that. Hey, you haven't sent us any documents. Hey, you haven't sent us your W-2s because it's all part of that process. It's mostly training. And, training and so, if they, is, so say they have something, Andrea, that in the organizer doesn't pertain to them. Do they just put like N-A or something like that? Or your team marks it off as not? Because, you know, the clients say maybe they don't, if they... Or did it just say you must complete every step before we do anything? Yeah. So every box is a required field and most of them are like a yes or a no. And if they click yes, it opens up, okay, upload that document here. So if it doesn't apply to them, they just click no and then it moves on. So it's kind of, it's a dynamic organizer, which is the power of some of these softwares, right? It's not like the old paper organizer that we used to send out or a PDF organizer that some of us still send out. Um, it does adjust for what the client answers, which I think helps a little bit. We do still get some pushback. And, and this is a thing that I didn't have time to fix before this tax season, but I will before next tax season. Because we have evolved and now we're talking to clients throughout the season, because all of our clients are in packages that include at least one projection, some of the questions in that organizer are redundant. We already know because we've already talked about it. And so I need to go back through and revamp the organizer to cut out the things that we're talking to them about through the year. Cause we don't want the client doing so much work that they feel like they could just input it into TurboTax themselves. Right. That's one of the complaints we hear. Like if I was going to do all this, I could just do my own return on TurboTax. So we're trying to reduce that client friction. We're trying to figure out the balance where we get all of the required information, but it's not as much work on the client side. Like we can't do everything for them, but we can make it a little bit easier especially since we are talking to them throughout the year. So we're still trying to find that balance. Even this is my 11th tax season and I'm still trying to figure it out. Like we still haven't found the perfect secret sauce yet. Yeah, because because you may already, um, since you have direct access and, and sounds like in all cases to their books, you'll be on as a user to be able to do a lot of shortcutty type things where like as a business client myself, I would really like for that to happen. Like if you if you could slim down everything as much as you can, you guys already have a lot of the stuff um, that's exactly. appreciated from the client side. So a couple of resources I wanna make sure people have. Um, we're trying to do a better job. This was actually one of the things we talked about in the mentor meeting is um, there's a lot of resources that we have in your program that people um, that we're not telling people about uh, well enough. And so I shared a couple of resources there about this document request stage. So say you're, um, you know, you hear that um, that Andrea is using uh, Tax Dome to do the organizer, right? Like I shared Adam Shea's uh, document request that he shared with us, as well as my own that I've built out. So if you're if you're either building this process for yourself, this initial document request, whether it's in tax zone, whether whatever system it's in, or even if it's just in an email, right, or a, or a PDF or a Word document, um, those might be some kind of ready-made materials that you could look at your process and, and maybe improve. And in general, you guys, for those types of 
like plug and play, not reinventing the wheel, that kind of thing. There's a course in your program, um, in your membership called uh, Tax Business Templates. So you have a lot of templates in there of different things that it took us a long time to develop or somebody like Andrea or Adam um, that you guys can plug and play. So I wanna, we want to do a better job of kind of letting people know um, about that. I also wanted to highlight a comment from Michelle that, that I thought was relevant is uh, by asking those few questions, the client will give more information that will be helpful to plan and catch things they might um, not have told you otherwise. So that's, uh, that's yeah, definitely... Like like just imagine, say you have a once a year tax client and tax season is very condensed, right? So you're learning that they bought a business, sold a business, bought a car for their business, right? You're learning all this stuff. Just imagine if say around October, you shot them all an email to say, hey, just checking in, tax season's coming. Let us know if anything's changed. Very simple, but they might be like, oh yeah, I forgot. I need to tell them about this or I should let them know I had a kid or I don't know, right? Like a simple little check-in might spur them to start feeding you some information. You can be making notes and then you already know that come tax time, that's that much less information you have to gather during your hundred days of tax season. Yeah. Thank you for joining us. I'm Imelda. Join us next week as we continue to share mini audio clips of step-by-step S Corp tax prep process. If you are interested in listening to the full process and want to be part of our dream team community, please visit prontotaxschool.com or email us to support at prontotaxschool.com. Being part of the Dream Team membership comes with getting expert support, top-rated training programs, and weekly video live events.